Young's double slit experiment. So in this experiment, we have a set of two slits, two openings uh, on uh, this uh, barrier here. These slits are called S1 and S2. And we have uh, plane light waves incident on the two, two slits. So you can see that the wave fronts are planes. So they will be incident on this set of uh, two slits. Uh, what happens to these uh, rays? Uh, if you remember that if the slit width or the opening uh, diameter is uh, much less than the wavelength, uh, then we will have these slits acting as point sources of uh, light. And so these uh, plane wave fronts will be turned into spherical wave fronts. And we will have uh, two sources, S1 and S2, at these slits producing uh, secondary the waves. So these waves, according to Huygens' principle, will be uh, produced by points in the in the slit, and the ray approximation will not hold anymore. The plane waves are uh, deformed into spherical waves, and uh, because they are two sources that are uh, producing coherent waves, uh, these waves, as they propagate to uh, to a screen, will have interference. Okay, so the interference from S1 and S2 produces bright and dark bands or fringes on the screen. So we will see that whenever the maxima overlap, we have a maximum, so they will adopt constructive interference. When the minima overlap, we have addition of the um, minima, minima giving us constructive interference. So as a result of this, well, uh, if you concentrate on the center here, because the, these two sources are coherent, they are producing waves in phase, uh, they, and they travel the same distance to reach the uh, central point over here, the center uh, will have a maximum. So if both waves travel the same distance, they arrive at point O in phase, this will produce a bright fringe uh, due to constructive interference. So the central uh, fringe is a bright fringe, as you can see on the screen. If the lower wave travels an extra distance of one lambda, a second bright fringe appears at point uh, P. So if you look at point P, this point, uh, we have the waves coming from S1 traveling uh, a distance and the waves coming from S2 traveling a distance. If the net difference <coughs> in the distances traveled by these waves, the path difference is equal to a single wavelength, they will still add up uh, in phase and this will produce constructive interference and the second bright fringe at point P. If the lower wave travels a lambda over two extra distance, then they arrive at point R with 180 degree phase difference, dark fringe or destructive interference will occur. So at this point we have the waves coming from S1 and the waves coming from S2 interfere, but <clears throat> the path difference between the two is a half a wavelength, so then we will have destruction of the wave, destructive interference, giving us a dark fringe uh, at this point. So uh, these waves add constructively at the red dots and destructively at the black dots. So when we have uh, the waves maxima are uh, basically coinciding, we have um, a constructive interference. When we have a, a maximum and a minimum coinciding, then we will have destructive interference giving us minimum intensity on the screen. So this experiment was performed by Thomas Young in 1801, and it clearly uh, demonstrates us the wave nature of light. And it's also a direct uh, proof of Huygens' principle. Okay, so um, in order to perform this experiment properly to observe this interference pattern, we need coherent sources. Coherent sources means they have constant phase relationship and we want to have a monochromatic that is single wavelength or single frequency source. For example, light bulbs are incoherent, so that won't work. So whatever source produces these plane waves must be a coherent uh, source and with one wavelength component in order to see this effect clearly. Okay, so 
uh, if you concentrate on uh, this S1 and S2, the waves produced by S1 and S2, uh, basically what we have to do is to count the number of wavelengths uh, until we reach the point O, where we will have bright fringe. Now you can see here uh, from these black dots, here, here we have one wavelength, two wavelengths, three, four, five, six, and this is a lambda over 4, so we only reach a maximum. So the total path difference traveled by this wave is 6 lambda plus lambda over 4. And for S2, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and lambda over 4. So they travel the same distance because they were produced by a coherent source with the same in phase relationship, so they both start with the black dot here with the minimum, uh, they're going to be interfering uh, constructively producing a bright fringe right in the middle. Now let's look at what's happening at point P. <clears throat> so in this example you can see we have one, two, three, four, five and lambda over two. Five lambda plus lambda over two path difference here. One, two, three, four, five, 6 and lambda over 2, so 6 lambda plus lambda over 2. Therefore, they're coming at point P in phase, so they will also produce a bright fringe. We don't have uh, a path difference that will produce a shift in the interference pattern, uh, making this maximum a minimum. However, if we look at uh, point R, destructive interference occurs at point R when the two waves combine because the lower wave falls one half a wavelength behind the upper wave. So let's see that. One, two, three, four, uh, five, and lambda over two. So one, two, three, four, five, and lambda over two is when we reach uh, point R, that's from S1. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this is 6 lambda. So there is a difference. So this one travels 5 lambda plus lambda over 2, this one 6 lambda. So the uh, as you can see here, uh, we have the uh, minimum of this uh, so what, what is happening here? Because we start from the uh, midpoint, 5 lambda plus lambda over 2, we arrive uh, at the midpoint here. Uh, but this travels 6 lambda, so that's going to, uh, because of the path difference being lambda over 2, that will be, uh, that will give us a maximum coinciding with the minimum. So for example, uh, on this point, so we will have uh, basically a dark fringe at point R. So <clears throat> it only depends on uh, the path difference between the two waves traveling to, to the point on the screen because they were coherent sources to start with. The double slits separate the original beam into two coherent parts and this, if you remember, when we have the slit opening much less than lambda, Huygens principle tells us that we are producing this these wavelets. The divergence of light from its initial direction of travel is called diffraction. So this effect where the plane wave is converted into spherical wave is called diffraction. And if A is greater than lambda, then we're, there will be no diffraction and no interference. Why is that? Because uh, the ray approximation will halt and they will still be <coughs> traveling with the plane wave fronts to the other side. So in this case, in this limit, you won't see any interference pattern. But uh, if with this condition where the uh, slit width is much less than the wavelength, they are turning into point sources producing these spherical waves, creating our interference pattern. Okay, so we have introduced Young's double slit experiment. Young's double slit experiment uh, basically demonstrates us that uh, light has a wave characteristic uh, and uh, it produces an interference pattern when a plane light wave uh, is incident on a barrier with two slits where the slit width is much less than the wavelength of light. 
Huygens' principle tells us that they are going to produce spherical waves and those waves will interfere constructively whenever the path difference between the two sources, S1 and S2, will be an integer multiple of wavelength and it will produce destructive interference whenever the path difference is lambda over 2, 3 lambda over 2, 5 lambda over 2, etc. And uh, we, as a result, we see on the screen bright fringes and dark fringes corresponding to this interference pattern. And here we have shown explicitly how this process uh, works. And in order to perform this experiment properly, we need a coherent source, constant phase relationship, monochromatic single wavelength uh, light, and also a slit opening much less than the wavelength in order to see the diffraction effect where the... Um, Divert, the light will diverge from its initial direction, the ray approximation will not hold. If this condition is not satisfied, there is no diffraction and no interference.